Jesse Homestead. How the heck are you? Uh, this is going to be an ongoing series about regenerative agriculture. It's really designed to help a new homesteader make informed decisions about how to improve their land. A recent uh, CBS uh, report uh, by CBS News had me wondering, how much longer can this go on? Let me give you a quote from them. Let's keep in mind that the average farm across the United States has been in the, is in the red. Large family farms are going backwards and has not made money for more than five years in a row, according to CBS News. So, it's time to get started here, folks. According to Wikipedia, regenerative agriculture is a conservation and rehabilitation approach to food and farming systems. Well, what is regenerative agriculture, really? Regenerative agriculture is, an, in a nutshell, uh, is a farming and grazing practices that, among other things, can reverse climate change by rebuilding the soil's organic matter and restoring degraded soil biodiversity, thereby the result of both removing the CO2 from the atmosphere and improving water, the water cycle. Regenerative agriculture is a land management practice that uses the power of photosynthesis in plants to remove carbon from the air, build soil health, crop resilience, and nutrient density. Regenerative agriculture is a proven method to improve soil health mainly through the practices that increase soil organic matter. This aids in increasing soil biodiversity and health both above and below the soil surface, while increasing both water holding capacity and sequestration of carbon at greater depths, thus drawing down the levels of atmospheric CO2, improving the soil structure, to reverse the soil that is the <coughs> soil loss caused by current modern farming techniques. Regenerative agriculture reverses this and rebuilds the natural soil for the future. Let's take a look at current farming methods. First is tillage. A lot of them are still doing it. Uh, tillage breaks up the soil aggregation and fungal communities. It adds excessive oxygen to the soil for increased respiration and CO2 emissions. It is one of the most degrading agricultural practices, greatly increasing soil erosion and carbon loss. A secondary effect is coil capping and what they call slaking. It can plug up the soil spaces for percolation, creating a much more, much more water runoff and soil loss. Artificial and synthetic fertilizers have created imbalances in the structure as well as the function of the microbial communities in the soil. Add to this the use of herbicides, which destroys the beneficial bacteria in the soil. This is bypassing the natural biology for the acquisition of the nutrients for the plants, creating the need for synthetic inputs. This biotech-dependent artificial synthetic system that has, create, uh, has created weaker and less resilient plants with very poor nutritional values. Research has observed that application of synthetic and artificial artificial fertilizers contributes to the following. Increased energy costs of production and transportation of these inputs, the chemical breakdown of the soil and the migration into the water resources and into the atmosphere, the destruction and distortion of soil fungal and microbial communities, as well as acceleration of the decomp decomposition of the soil organic matter, thus decreasing, sorry, I'm really bad at this, uh, decreasing the moisture retention capacity of the soil. Soil needs organic matter in it. Fertilizers and herbicides break them down faster, thus you're losing it. Keeping in mind that animal feed is currently grown in these conditions, feedlots and confined animal feeding systems contribute dramatically to unhealthy monoculture production systems. Low nutrient dis density of forage increased water pollution, antibiotic usage and resistance, CO2 and methane emissions, all of which together equal a broken and degraded food system. Let's take a look at what regenerative agriculture does. Building a regenerative agriculture ecosystem really begins with the inoculation of soils using compost and compost post extracts to restore the soil's micro uh, community. If you don't have your micro uh, community population in good shape, uh, it's hard to turn your soil around. You also need the root fungus structure. This is functionally restoring the soil system energy. 
Then through full-time planning of multi-crop rotational plantings, multi-species covers, borders planted uh, for bee habitation and other beneficial insects, all aid in this system. A well, well-managed grazing practices stimulates both plant growth, increased soil carbon deposits, overall pasture and grazing land productivity, while greatly increasing soil fertility, insect and plant biodiversity, as well as soil carbon, carbon sequestration. These practices not only improve the ecological health, but also the health of the animals and humans consumers through the improved micronutrients available and better dietary omega balance. Okay, now that I've given you the textbook version, let me break this down for you. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this series on uh, the current farming techniques because they failed. They simply are failing. And unless we get back to nature's way of healing our soil, uh, it's just not going to work. So what I'm going to be Basically, what I want to say is regenerative agriculture is nothing more than going back to nature's way. You put in a very diverse cover on your fields. You bring in your livestock. You let them stomp it in. You let them drop 50 pounds out their butts every time they move, uh, things of this nature. And you move them off. Don't let them eat it all the way down. Bring in your chickens. Bring in your sheep or your goats and keep that uh, ground being worked. Then you come back with, roll the stuff down, drill in your crop, and you're gonna find out that you've got some soil there. You know, that's the way it works. Now, is it gonna happen overnight? No, it's gonna take a few years. Uh, but I, I've seen where, I uh, worked with a fellow up here to where he got it pulled off in a couple of years, and that's what we're gonna focus on, is how to do this and even give you the plants uh, to put out there and you know what their nutrient content is and so forth uh, you know you can look at your soil see what it needs and then go find the cover crop to bring that back into your soil okay so it's a great way to go i mean there's crops you can plant and cover crops you can mix in out there that'll even give you such things as uh, oh i don't know bring your zincs and coppers back up to the surface and so on. But let's talk a minute about our food. What's happening here to the food supply in this country and other places is, is getting bad. There's going to be shortages and there's going to be, the food being produced today has such pathetic nutritional values. We're getting known worldwide for having poor quality crops. That tells you something, folks. We're the number one GMO user in the world. Okay? When you, when you look at what we're doing, you begin to understand this is just not sustainable at all. We're turning our, our farmland into deserts. Uh, they're not holding water. And then you look at examples of regenerative, uh, the regenerative agriculture that gentlemen are using out there. Their production's a lot higher. Their crops are more drought resistant because their soil is retaining more water. Things, just simple things that nature has taught us, and if we would use our heads for something besides a hat rack, we'd see that. And that's what this series is going to be about. This one just kind of gives you a little breakdown between the two. Now we're going to get into how to do this, what plants you need for certain nutrients, and how to run that kind of operation if you're row cropping. Now, I got to be honest with you, you go out and buy this totally dead soil, you're probably going to be at it for a couple years before you get it right. But once you get it right, once you understand the principle, you're going to be productive, you're going to be profitable because you're not putting the inputs in that you were, and you're going to make money and have a farm that is sustainable. That's what this is all about, folks. This is Rich Tennessee Homestead. I hope this helps out a little bit. I hope you enjoy it, and we'll talk to you later.